Welcome back to Uruk, and really beyond, ladies and gentlemen, because we've conquered so much. I am Marcus Aurelius, and this is, of course, Dominions 5, Warriors of the Faith. And the faith in question right now is the Church of Ursula. Praise her. Some of you might be wondering, Marcus, why are you spending all this money to upgrade your forts? Like, instead of just letting it sit with the Palisade, why are you investing more money? And the reason why is as you upgrade these forts, they have a higher administration value. They also have higher defenses and stuff, which is good if they're being under siege. But for the most point, I'm looking at the administration. And here's why that matters. So a walled city has an administration of 40. I think I mentioned in a previous episode that it takes 40% of double the resources of all adjacent territories. So for example, if an adjacent territory has 20 resources, then we would take 40% of 40. So it improves the resources you gather. So for troop production, that's very important. But it's also great for income because the administration value divided by two is the percentage increase of the income you see by having it. So in this case, this walled city improves the income of the province that it's in by 20%, which is another reason why I'm choosing high population provinces because 20% of 171 is substantially better than 20% of 48. But 20% is not the highest we can go. The highest we can go is actually 25% or an administration of 50. That's the best we can do, a fortified city. And I think, though I may be wrong, that that is a special thing about being Uruk and that other nations can only get as high as 40. At least as far as I've seen, the AI is only building up to 40. So I could be wrong. Maybe the AI just isn't investing the money. Maybe it's not really of interest to them, but that's what I see here. All right, so we have some new people. We have Ningirsu, who is nature. So that, you know what that means, folks? That means assassin at some point. But um, Ningirsu is going to be Luntar Nani Ur. Okay, but for right now, Luntar is going to be researching. Actually, let's give Seeing Spots a feather. And actually, Luntar, you can do us a favor, if you wouldn't mind, by building. Why can't we build? Oh, we already have a lab and a temple? Wait, where am I? Oh, I'm down here. Okay. Well, I got a little confused there for a minute. All right. So actually, over here in Assyrian, Larry... You are going to build a lab. Okay. Whereas Alma is not going to be Alma. You're going to be that guy. I like it. All right, that guy, you are going to defend Assyrian with your life for right now. So all these spearmen that we produced, they're going to be yours. We're going to get four more. And then a bunch of archers. All right, and you're going to patrol. We're also going to raise this up to 11. All right, cool. Let's recruit our four ladies while we while we have time. Um, Are we ready to attack out again? Nah, another research mage. And let's get some of these guys and spearmen. Okay, Sermiok, Purple Lit, we're going to get you some guys too. And a Research Mage here. Knights, he's going to forge another Owl Quill. Um, yeah, Research is now up to 138 per month, so we're starting to finally work that one out. Alteration 5 is where we really want to be, as I said before, because that will give us Wooden Warriors, which allows Illa and future Shamans to buff up large amounts of our troops. In addition to that, it also gives us the ability to cast Mother Oak, although we're so poor on Nature Gems, but we're going to want Ursula to go home and cast that as soon as possible, purely for that reason. We're going to have to convert some gems, but that'll give us an additional, I think, 10 Nature Gems a turn which is going to be super helpful for us. That's why Alteration 5 is, is really cool. There's not much else we could use it for. It does allow 
some of our units to cast Baleful Star, which, um, it, I, what does it do? It, it, it curses enemy units in a province. I, for seven Astral Pearls, I don't know. I mean, I see the use of it in some situations because cursed units are easier to hit. But what really is, I guess it's good for is if you're like, if you know where a super combatant or a thug is in a multiplayer game, you could target them with this. We don't have any Earth people besides Ursula good enough to cast any of these spells. And Phantasmal Army would require substantial, unless Ursula is doing it, it would require substantial help. Our, our Oogaloos could do it if we, um... Well, first we have to give them a gem. Unfortunately, unlike Earth gems, Nature gems, I think Death gems and Fire gems, and Astral Pearls, Water gems and... Water gems and Air gems don't have a gem gen item. Meaning... There's an item, for, like, for example, for nature gems called a cornucopia that every single battle gives you two free gems. But that there's no such item for air. So in order to cast air spells that require gems, you actually need to have gems. So this, we'll see. Again, I'm not a big fan of carrying around gems, but this is a really good spell. It, it gives a huge amount of your troops. Oh wait, no, this is the wrong spell. I thought this was the, the spell that turns your whole entire army into phantasms, but it actually just spawns a bunch of phantasms, so that's not that useful. Sorry. I was thinking of Fog Warriors, which still requires gems. Three of them. And a, a lot more air, but... Alright. So we're getting Conjuration to Oogaloo, and then... Construction to six, I think, is important. Because we are, we are liking forging items. Alright, have I named everyone? No. Talker Tomb. Talker Tomb needs to be renamed. Oh, that's funny. Alright. I guess this is in honor of my first ever Ur campaign, where our prophet was uh, Batman. So, we're going to name Soccer Tune to Batman. So we have Batman, and Batman's actually going to be quite useful. Not right now. Right now, she's going to focus on researching. But later in the game, we're going to have her cast Frozen Heart. So she'll be really useful in battle. Alright, anybody else I forgot to name? Purple is named. That guy is named. Now that we have so many places generating units, it's going to be harder for me to catch up with the naming. All right, Fulgrim and Casual Dread. You'll head down here. All right, what are you guys up? Okay. We could potentially try to take this province. I think we could take it. I don't see any reason why not. Okay. Actually, Anders. How would you like to get involved in some, uh, some fighting? Just help him out. But we gotta make you do different things here. So we're gonna move your archers up here, and we're gonna move these guys up here, and they're gonna hold an attack rear. Actually, we'll move the archers. Well, we don't want to put them in the way of the... Let's move them back a little bit. And we'll move you back a little bit. Alright, perfect. We should be able to take whatever they throw at us with this gigantic army. Morgoth? Let's go down here, see what this province is. Trip Fields! Welcome back, my friend. Let's have you go all the way back to the... Wow, you can go to Uruk in one turn? Fantastic. Let's help Trip out here. Knights... Will you please give your hammer to Chameleonis? Chameleonis, will you please forge? Let's see, what's cheaper? We have the Ranger Boots, which take five nature gems, will boost his stealth by 20 and give him reinvigoration. Not that he needs it. Or a Ranger's Cloak, which will give him a stealth boost of 30 and cost five. So the cloak, obviously. All right. Actually, we could use some more Dwarven Hammers, Ursula. Where do I want you to go? Okay, so... Erd is a mountain province, so it might be worth searching. As And Bankish is a wasteland, so it might be worth searching. And then I want to get you back. It's, uh, yeah, it's already year two. I, I need you forging and casting and doing amazing things. So I think we're going to stop at Bankish and then go to Uruk. We'll have other people search Erd or we'll cast spells on it. Because you're just too valuable. But bank wastelands have the highest percentage of magic sites of any of any province, I think. So it's worth checking it out. Alright. Aga, Urimbu, and Berlandis 
head on over to Assad. Let's get some rudimentary province defense here. And, okay, there's Agartha. We are not currently at war with them. And I don't think I necessarily want to be. Where the hell did all our money go? Well, I guess all these people that we're recruiting, probably. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to go to Assad with this army, too, because that's just way too many armies. So... I guess you guys will go to, uh, you guys will go to, uh, Bankish, to guard Ursula for right now. Well, since we're practically out of money anyway, let's get the defense up in here. Some he more heavy cav, which is great. Actually, you know what? Between this, this whole army, they could recruit up to, or they could search up to two nature, two water, and three astral. So let's, let's do that instead. All right. And we're out of money. We're broke. Madam Mew. Uh, we still need to upgrade this one more level. But I guess Larry could do that later. But, I mean... I want to forge good scout items, and we can't really afford to forge more than what we're doing for trips. So, Madam Mew, I guess we'll just have you... Will we have you stay here? Is there anybody else... Actually, let's move you up to Summer Bay. To build a fort there. Even though it isn't necessarily... Valuable. We might want to build a fort in Ginnith Mercs just to protect the throne from this direction. There's a river here, so it's not like it would draw anything from Assyrian anyway. But we could do Queen Forest if we're concerned. Although Queen Forest can only draw from Sintania and Ginnith Mercs, whereas Ginnith Mercs can draw from Queen Forest, Assad, and Ben Kish. And I think they'd probably draw from Polgrave too. If you're wondering why I'm not recruiting. Mages of Spring, it's because uh, there's hardly any resources here, but if we do build a Fortress here, or if we upgrade this one to level 3, which we are going to do, there will be no resources here to do it. Plus, why recruit a Mage of Spring that gets weak in the non-Spring when we can recruit these bad boys here? Who are a little cheaper, too. Alright, Nathan, let's head up here. Oh, you are already? Good. Alright, let's end the turn, then. Wow, that was 12 minutes of me just yapping. Fantastic. <laughs> All right, Kiero found nothing. Illa, however, found something. Marquis de Sade found nothing. So it must be a nature site, which, thank God, we need. Might be an earth site. We'll see. Fenica. Okay, knights. So we fought heavy cavalry before, but we have not fought knights. Knights are even worse. And they're led by a knight commander. And they all have experience. So you can just see 18 protection, 16 defense. So hitting these guys is going to be ridiculous. Plus they have a lance, a broadsword. They both do 17 damage. And a hoof that does blunt damage. So we're not going to escape this one unscathed. What the hell is that? Okay, we got our divine blessing up. Just in time. All right, we're gonna run up. Oh, they see the Knight Commander took out one of our Ursuline Guard right in the first attack. Their flankers have been stopped by our Spearmen. Excellent. You know what I might wanna do with this army is actually send it back up to Uruk to get more units to refresh. Although I could just have them sit down here and have a commander bring the units down. All right, they've made it up into our <laughs> made up into our archers here. It's never a good thing. Looks like a bunch of our troops are fleeing, so we're going to lose some of them in the retreat. Where did I put their commander? He's here, right? Hopefully. God, I hope so. Yeah, they're both here. We have yeah, Nurgal, and then down here we have... Come on. Down here we... No. Okay, please let me click you, sir. Please. Anders. And Anders is ethereal. Oh, right, because Kionisher has Astral. Nice. Good job, Kionisher. All right, so they, they've completely routed our archers, which is not awesome. 
but it is kind of dragging them out and giving the rest of our troops a chance to come in and get them. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nurgle? Oh, Anders. Anders, buddy. No, don't do this. Don't do this, Anders. Don't be a hero. Don't... Anders, don't be a hero. Huh. I'm so glad he's ethereal. If he was not ethereal, I would be a sad panda right now. He survived. Stop. Let's see if he did anything cool. Nothing. He did nothing cool. Oh well. It's alright. I forgive you. 16 archers, 1 iron warrior, 13 soldiers, and an Ursuline guard. This is probably the most severe loss we have encountered in this entire campaign. Based on the fact they had th uh, 3 knight commanders and 16 knights plus longbowmen. But it was mostly the knights. So we lost 5 additional units in the retreat. Only 11 of them made it back home. Assad. That's no good. This is only Horse Tribe. Smaller army, though. That first volley of arrows scares me so much until they can cast their... <laughs> Just in time, too. Holy crap. Oh, man. I thought having these ladies up a bit further would... Um, keep the arrows from flying at them, but it really hasn't. It's only a matter of time before one of our mages just gets capped. Let's speed it up. That's neat how they have two rows of them, so they can one row can fire while the other row fights. The Amazons are still alive. Alright, let's take a quick look here. So we lost, wow, two soldiers and three spearmen, but all of our leaders somehow managed to stay alive. Well, maybe. Oh yeah, they're all alive. Berenbu doing tons of damage. Gosh, I hope that one of them actually turns out to be a kill. Let's find out. She killed three. Awesome. I knew it. Our assassins are going to work, folks. They are going to work. Once she... Once she has a better bow, this isn't actually her, this is just a generic nin, but once she has a better bow, she is going to be unstoppable. Like the bow of war, holy crap, we're about to see some amazing stuff. Our regular archer's got six kills. Ursuline guard, obviously representing. Only 12 of them in this army, though. Alright, so next row, false prophet is spreading his lies. Uh-oh, dominion number two, unless found and dealt with. Oh, well, good thing we have a patrolling army there. Ban Kish. Ah, we swindled the peddler. I hate when we do this, but... Whatever. We basically pay him one gold coin for all these gems. Lyratos. Nature gems. Yes! That pays for, uh... Well, it's, it'll sort of... Yeah, it does pay for... Trips, um... Armor. Okay. Sharat Shippa. Another nature one. We're sure getting a lot of nature ones. That's good. I like our assassins. I'm really actually kind of pumped for them. So this, this is Karuk of Uruk, which is actually very useful because Karuk is in Uruk. All right, over here, we have, wait, did we not recruit a mage? I guess, yeah, we didn't because we couldn't afford one, probably. So Karuk is the only person we recruited? Oh, no, we have another... Shaman. Lord Death. Welcome to the team, Lord Death. Alright, excellent. So Trip, how would you like a Ranger's Cloak? Look at you now. You are 70 stealthy, which is amazing. Um, oh god, I'm going to try to explain to you guys how stealthy works. And I know someone in the comments is going to be like, Marcus, you ignorant slut. That's not how it works at all. But I think... In order for him to be found, yeah, so there needs to be at least a patrol strength of 70 in the province, and that will give them a 50% chance of finding Trip, which is really high. Um, I mean, it's possible. Trip is not completely invisible. If I gave him the boots, that would be another 30 or 20. And there's also something called the Eye of Innocence, which I'd have to actually forcibly remove Trip's eye, which sucks for Trip, and put that, put that in the socket but it will also improve his stealthiness even further. So you can just completely go nuts with the stealthiness, but I think 70 is pretty solid. So 
The question is, where do I want Trip to go? He'd be most useful for us in a position where he could see fighting by other players in the game. Oh shit, they built a fort in Livenmark. But let's say, yeah, we're gonna head south. We're gonna head south to uh, check all this out. So they're, nah, I don't, I hate forts. Should I take it? I don't know. Did I forget to search here? I don't know. It's outside of my dominion though. So that's where Trip's going. Um. So the real question here is, what can Camillianus forge? Thistle Mace is good. Vine, uh, Vinebow is not that good. This is good for thugs, but not very good for what we want right now. This is... I don't love it, but it's a national item. Restricted to, uh, I think, only Ur and Uruk. And it, what it basically does is it improves the strength of the wearer. And it also provides them with one buffalo to guard them in case an enemy gets close. So for a shaman, this is actually kind of fun. But, it, I mean, it's not the best in the world. This is good, though. Not really right now, because we don't have a good nature gem income. But eventually, this gives you a, a vine ogre bonus if you want to summon vine ogres. Oops. I know I don't want that. This will um, just give you luck. But it doesn't give you any armor. This is sort of interesting, because it's relatively cheap. With a dwarven hammer, it only costs um, two gems total. I think maybe one of each. I don't know. But um, it gives you okay, but not great protection. A little bit minus defense and encumbrance, so it's not as good as the weightless stuff. But what's good about it is it covers both your head and your body. So for like a shaman, it would be useful. Although the problem with the shamans is that they, um, they're not sacred, so they're not going to get my reinvigoration bonus. So they have to find another way to reinvigorate themselves. I think they can, though, if they have a thistle mace, and then they can cast Strength of Gaia, which will do that, I believe. Obviously, this is great for reinvigoration, too. Boots the Messenger gives them plus three reinvigoration. And another thing that does it is the uh, Girdle Might, which gives you strength and three reinvigoration. Although Earth Gems are pretty rare, so you're not going to see us forging a bunch of those. These guys are good here. This is regeneration. So, for example, if we put that on one of our, one of our mages or sacred units, they would get, I believe, 20% regeneration. So the 10% they get from the Bless plus the 10% from this. And this is 5 Reinvigoration for 10 Earth Gems. So relative to, uh, well, 3. Eh, it's proportional. But that's what Chameleonis is going to do. He's going to forge a Thistle Mace. Ursula is going to search. Um, all right, we're going to put this up to 21. Wait, don't we get Knights? Oh, that's a shame. And, okay. Anders, you're going to head back home. And you're going to have to patrol here to make sure whatever problems there aren't aren't growing. Kionashur and Nergalaresh are going to head back to Uruk. Palisade's still being built. What do we have here? All right, we'll pick them up on the way. There's no one anywhere else. We are two months away from the Palisade here. Purple it. Let's give you some guys. Fire closest. Hold and attack closest. You're already patrolling. So what do you need still? A lot. You just need a lot of everything. Let's get you some more spearmen. Okay. What we need to do is bring a, a healer and an Aristinger over here. So let's recruit an Aristinger. Four of these ladies. And what exactly do we need? So we have a lot of heavy archers. So that's fine. Are those our spearmen? No, those are iron warriors. So it looks like spearmen is what we need. A lot of bodyguards. Very few spearmen. Okay. All right. Excellent. All right. Knights, you can go ahead and just forge an alquil. I mean, even even without the hammer, you'd still forge plenty. 
Nathan. Nathan. All right, we're going to have to make a choice soon, folks, because right now, Yis is peaceful with us. I don't see any reason we'd want to piss him off, but this army is just kind of sitting idle here. In fact, the only person who wants to fight us is Pythium, and they're way over here. I guess we could focus some of our attention on getting into the ocean. All right, that guy. I think, yeah, so you need 11 more archers. We're going to build an Ashapu, which we're going to send over to Sermiok. So next row, we'll just do a research mage. These guys suck at researching. And then, yeah, they don't give us anything we don't already have, so not necessary. Now, we did lose some guys from Anders. So what are you left with, Anders? Nothing. You lost your entire army? All right, well, let's recruit some more guys for Anders. Okay. I guess we could fight Agartha. It's be a limited sphere of engagement because unless they get in a war with uh, with Yis, they're not going to be able to attack us from this angle. We could do that. In which case, though, trip fields would be more useful up here. How are these guys doing? They're they're running out of troops, to be perfectly honest. So okay, let's let's try to take Centania. And do I want to get aggressive? I could. We found a gorge. Our gems are good. This army's actually pretty solid. All right, Marquita Sade, we're going to change your bark skin for liquid body. And we're going to change your cold bolt. Actually, we might leave it a cold bolt. Or numbness. Now, I like numbness actually a lot. So the difference is cold bolt is an attack spell, whereas numbness freezes enemies, which slows them and causes them to have fatigue. I don't know. Yeah, we'll stick with it. Kiero, are just gonna switch out Twist Fate for Liquid Body, and then we can just we can just mind burn all over the place because Liquid Body will pretty much make her invulnerable to arrows anyway. So good, Illa can't do much though, unfortunately. But you do, I think, now have instead of protection, you have. Or maybe not yet. Wooden Warriors, I think maybe one more. One more research. Yeah, one more research. But soon. Soon. So are we going to attack or what? What are we going to do, Marcus? I just, I want more intelligence. Like, I don't know. They could have huge armies here for all I know. But right now they're just sitting idle and I'm paying money for them. Although not, not a lot, when you consider my income. Also, it'll make this substantially weaker army vulnerable. Huh. Let's head on over to Assad, and we'll site search here. We might build a fort here, too. This is a great place for a fort. And then we won't build anything here. We'll just build this fort and this fort. Oh, yeah, 14,000 people. That's great. All right, Lord Death is moving up. Moving on up to the east side. All right, Tarim Uram is not one of ours, I'm pretty sure. So... Omaha Steel.
feather. Enjoy. Alright. Okay, what am I doing with you again, Morgoth? Am I just sending you home? Yeah, I guess we'll send you home. One thing that's really disappointing me is we're not seeing any battles between our enemies. Okay, Larry. You are just... Now that it was a laboratory and a temple, you are just going to research. Nathan, for right now, you are as well. Or actually, Nathan could deliver some... Well, like, in there's no point in that because there's no one to fight. Huh. All right, research is fine for now. All right, we're 31 minutes, but I will go one more turn. Because I got a fever, and the only cure is more dominions. <laughs> nice. Okay, so now we have wooden warriors. We have some basic conjuration spells. Looks like Bagwandas, the Bandar commander, has claimed the throne of the stars. Isn't that a level 2 throne? Shit. Bulgrim found nothing. Ursula did find an Ursula is on fire! Casual Dread also found a site. Centania. This is like the last available neutral province. Oh, how cool. There's a nice little nice little watery area in the background. Beautiful. Oh, more cavalry. Man. This army's like, just no more cavalry. Please, we're tired. Awesome. They completely failed to do damage to these ladies. The knights are much more formidable. One of them just got fine. Oh yeah, Word of Thorns! Nice! Another one! Good job, Aga of Kish. Although now you, should, you could probably be casting all kinds of cool stuff. Or are you? Yeah, with three Astral, you could... Yeah, we could start having you cast some amazing stuff. What is your heroic ability again? Protection. Nice. That's perfect, too, because it protects her from getting hit by an arrow. See, if all of our N2s could get heroic protection, then we'd be in business. Both, by the way, of our Amazons are still with us. Oh! Our assassin took out... Took out another one. Our, our Amazons? Man, our Amazons rock. The archers took out three, so we lost a soldier, but that's it. Our Ursuline Guard, of course, did amazingly well. And I'm just, I'm loving our assassins. I can't wait till we have, like, tons of them. Oh, I was just saying. Wasn't I just saying? Oh, sad, we're not seeing any fights between our enemies. Well, the game heard me, and it delivers. So we have the monkeys riding on tigers. Oh, you're diseased, that's no good. But he doesn't care. He's going to reincarnate. So reincarnation, I don't ever play the monkeys, so it's really hard to explain. But essentially, if they have a lot of experience, I guess, there's a possibility that if they die within their own domain, that they will be reincarnated. Now, I don't know if their reincarnation gives them, like, the same kind of unit, or if it reincarnates them into a different kind of unit. I'm, I, I don't know the details, but I think what this says here is, this is the maximum possible chance, so that he has a 10% chance of being reincarnated. And they're sacred. I mean, it's not terrible. And then there's just tigers without riders. And then there is a, a Rishi who has a 50% chance of reincarnation, because they're apparently very enlightened. As you can see, he's hovering off the ground. Although, hate to break your, uh, hate to break your, uh, um, self-esteem, dude, but Ursula can do that as well. But he's pretty, he's pretty nasty. Two nature, three. So he, with a Thistle Mace, he can Strength of Gaia. Although I don't think the, um, AI is clever enough to do that. But he's, he can Mind Hunt, Soul Slay, yeef. Pretty good mage. All things said and done. Sacred, but not blessed. Meanwhile, oh well, I also missed the, uh, the Bandar Archers. Wow, a lot of diseases here. It's no good, guys. Meanwhile, Machaka is fielding the absolute shittiest province defense ever. Just some woodsmen. Yeah, the tiger's just gonna maul you. Alright, well that was fun. So, they lost a tiger, but they took the province from Machaka. 
But what I want to know is if Yis or Agartha are fighting anyone, because then that would make it easier for me to go into them. Erebon, oh, Spring Floods, lost a lot of gold. Stonegrave got their Palisades. So that means, yep, we got our first Air Mage. Gileon. Welcome to the team, Gileon. So I'm not just going to send these guys naked into battle. Unless I can get... Unless I have... If I have Mist... Mist Body. Is that Alteration? Mist Form. Okay. Never mind. I'll send them naked into battle. That's fine. They'll be pretty protected after that. All right, construction six. Do I want any enchantment? Is there anything good here? There actually is. Okay, so long term, I didn't talk about this, I think, during my hour long strategy episode, but there are some things that really help us that only Ursula can do. First is Trade Wind. It requires four air, but essentially what it does is you can cast it in any province that borders an ocean, borders water. And as you can see, we have many. I'm only going to do it, though, on the ones with forts. Because... And, and you put, it costs 10 gems initially, but you can put more gems into it. But what it does is it increases the income of that province by 25 additional percent. So for a province that's already making me, like, 200 gold, this would increase it by another 50. It's an amazing spell. So I'll have her flying back and forth from our... Um, or and eventually I'll probably get an Oogaloo with a uh, some kind of booster, maybe a helmet, to do it. But essentially it's... Um, it's huge for us. It's going to make us so much money, it's ridiculous. The next thing I want Ursula to do, and this is a new... From what I understand, this is a new spell to Dominions 5. I don't remember it in Dominions 4, but only Ursula can cast this. It takes 5 Earth. None of our mages summoned or recruitable can do this. It's expensive. 30 Earth Gems. But here's what it does. It improves the order of the province, which again improves income. It can only be cast in a fort but it improves the order by one, which is huge for us because it also lowers the chance of negative events. But also, it creates like 10 lions in the fort to defend in case the fort's ever attacked. Now, I don't know if they're Kitharonic lions or just regular lions. It says they're magical beings. So, you know, I've never actually witnessed them, but the idea of having a defense of 10 lions in all of our forts, plus increasing the order scale, is amazing and one of the reasons why we totally want more earth gems and why eventually we want enchantment though i don't think we want it just yet because i want to i think go first to alteration seven mass protection so with the cornucopia our shaman with the thistle mace too um, so the shaman with the thistle, thistle mace and the cornucopia can basically bark skin the entire battlefield so that's great, because then it frees them up to do other things with their time, and everyone's protected. Even our mages, which is fantastic. So yeah, let's do that. And then we can maybe... Do I want to go further? Like, for example, to... Well, no, because to get an Anzu, we have to go to level 7, and to get an Apkalu, we need all the way to 8. I'd rather... I mean, I could probably get to Enchantment. At least to the uh, trade wind level five, like super quick. So, all right, cool. All right, so Patron and Gileon, you are both going to head to Uruk. You guys are now on repeat. I love you so much. Thank you for playing. I'm not going to recruit troops here though. Well, actually, I could recruit archers, and then just keep ferrying them back to Uruk. That way, we can focus our Uruk production on non-archers. That's a possibility. We have plenty of resources, too. So we could recruit all fancy archers. Should I repeat? Eh, there might be turns when I need the money, and I don't want to recruit them. So it'll be a, it'll be a, a choice basis. I love how our scout takes over from, from Ursula here. She found the desert... Oh, cool! One death, one air, and the Sorcerer of the Sands. But if I'm going to build a fort here and a fort here, building a fort here is kind of stupid. But what would it get me? Like, what does this guy actually do? One fire, one air, one earth. So one out of four of these guys would have two fire, and one out of four would have two earth. 
And one out of four would have two air. That is actually really, really good for us. Not the air so much, because we have that now, but the two earth and the two fire, we don't have anyone that we can recruit that has that. But we'd have to build a fort, because it doesn't tell us, but they probably take four commander points. They would have to, I would assume. So I could do that deal where I just build a palisade here and build the cities here, or I could skip Assad completely and build maybe a fort in Sleepy Wolds. Or Centania. Although Assad was perfectly placed. I could build I could build forts in both. I mean, there's nothing stopping me from building a line of three forts here. All it would do is it would keep the admittedly low resources of Bankish from being delivered to either of these provinces, which I don't think either of them need. They're, they're both being produced for money, not so much resources. Huh. Decisions, decisions. Anyway, Ursula, you're going home. But Madame Mew? Alright. We're going to get ourselves some sand mages or whatever they are. Because I want that. That two fire means we could sight search fire. And the two earth means we can uh, do a bunch of earth evocations. We could forge boots easily. Very good. And plus with boots, they'd be three earth. They are old, but... We'll deal with that. I love it, though. I love it. See, that's why I love magic sites. Who would have thought? Sorcerer of the Sands and Illusionists are going to be, like, a main player in our armies. All right, Lord Death. I know you suck at researching, but that's just what you're going to do right now. Chameleonis, you too. Give your hammer back to Knights because I want to save my nature gems for Ursula. Knights, could you please make an Owl Quill? And Larry, we'll give you a... There we go. Oh, but we will do Chameleonis. Since you were the first. Where are you? We'll give you a Thistle. So eventually you should be able to cast cool spells once we get a good nature gem income. Do we have anyone? Yeah. Puabu <laughs> is going to be... Sid Deckard. And Sid, you are going to head on over to... Well, first you're going to side search here, and then you're going to head on over to Sermiok, where you're going to hang out and prevent horrible, evil things from happening to the poor people there. Um, in Busha, you are going to be Valmar. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to head on over to Sermiok as well. Wow, you are fast. Excellent. All right, cool. So we also need an Erishtinger here. I didn't notice that we didn't have one. So let's recruit one. And what do you... Uh... All right, you're full. So that guy's full. We're not going to really recruit any more troops here. I mean, we definitely could afford it. We have plenty of money. And we can't just have Uruk recruiting everything. All right. So Isurian is going to assist. Since it is pretty close to the front lines, at least relatively, they're going to start producing, I think, spearmen. On repeat. They're just going to be our basic line troops. All right, Centania, let's get you up to... Nice. It looks like Agartha's just getting trashed here by neutrals and whatnot. Oh, look, that's a big deal there. So I can run up here and take impassable mountains, and it's, we're still not at war with them, although it's putting us in a precarious position. But then we can go down to... Oh, we can't. Uh, so Lombaria, we'd have to go through, which I bet Agartha has. 20 troglodytes? Can this army take 20 troglodytes? Now, troglodytes trample, but we are large. Like, we're, we're bigger than humans. Um, but you know what I'm going to do, though, is Arenbu. I'm going to have you fire... Large enemy monsters. And we're going to do it. Let's roll them dice. I'm sorry. I'm really pumped about our assassins. I just like them so much. And we'll, we'll move... Uh, actually, you know what? We'll stay here. They're massing here. This would put us... Like, if they were... If they snuck around, we'd have a hard time. 
If they want to take Centania, they're welcome to it. We'll, we'll just take it right back. So everybody's going to sight search here. Oh, Illa. We got to change up Illa's... Uh, we got to change up Illa's orders. All right, so we can't move... Oh, we can't move from here. Okay. So Bardor, go down here. You're going to head here. All right, so wow, it's Tian Chi's in the mix here, too. I hope they're fighting all together. That'd be great. Anders, we need to give you some, some troops. Okay, so you still need 11 spearmen and 13 archers. Okay, research mage. Um, I guess Ahanatum. Yeah, you're not one of ours. So, Gino, welcome to the team, Gino. Now, as I mentioned, these right now are focusing on research, but later in the game they could uh, be peppered throughout our army to make them ethereal. So that's a good good thing for them. Are we recruiting? Yep, we're recruiting another one. Good. Are we recruiting one here? We are. Oh yeah, Airstinger. Cool. And we have to build a temple and a thing here. We're one turn away from this fort here, which is great. And we're building a fort here. Eventually here. <laughs> uh, we're spending a lot of money. All right. One, two, three, four. And... Do I need anything in particular here? We don't need an expansion army, so we're bringing this army back up. And then we have Nathan... So we could use eventually an N2 to back up Nathan, but not just yet. It's going to be one, two, at least two, two. Well, if we start recruiting one now, it'd be right. But they're going to take all the troops, right? So there's not going to be that many troops left. So I think it's probably best to go with another research mage. And since we're getting all of our spearmen from that other province, let's go Iron Warriors and Royal Guard. And we can actually repeat that. Um... Sure, I'll leave this last spearman. Why not? Maybe we'll change it in the later one. All right, looking good. Anders, you're going to actually patrol. Okay. Uh, yeah, you two. You didn't find anything? Damn, that sucks. So the only thing you'll benefit here is an extra level of water. So let's, instead, let's move you up to Amberfields. There's Trip. Good old Trip. All right. Um, let's head to Jome since they they have a fort there. And that's it, guys. We're already at almost 50 minutes. I, I just keep going over, but it's because I love playing this game so much. I love leading the armies of Ursula. Praise her. Look at our awesome Dominion. I mean, we've got this whole little peninsula here. Actually, it's not a peninsula, it's an isthmus. <laughs> an isthmus connect is a little sliver of land connecting to, to other. But um, we've also got a pretty good lock on this, except for this one province by, by Yis. But over here, we have a good lock on it. So TNG can't get through to us. And we are I would rather be down here, up to the river, having the river protect us. But someday, huh? Otherwise, we're looking really good. Although, oh boy, they just built a fort there. That's not good. Although, luckily for us, this is still neutral. Yeah, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I am Marcus Aurelius. I know you all are capable of great things, so I want you to go out and have a wonderful day and do amazing stuff. Have a good one.